Hey everyone, it's JC. Today it's time for our final section in my series on abiding in the love of Christ. We've been talking about how we learn to move beyond the intellectual knowing of his love and actually getting to where we're tasting it, living in it, experiencing it, feeling it every single day, feasting on it all the time. That's what abiding means. So this is, this is hard because we could do 10 videos on this. I'm not, I'm not talking about everything that there is to talk about, but this last one has a special place in my heart. It's funny. I actually did not sleep well last night at all. And so I, I woke up ready. I knew I would do this today, but it's almost like the adversary is trying to, <laughs> to shut this one down. So hopefully you're praying with me as, as we talk about some things that are so dear to my heart. I'm going to start with a story. Um, that I did not understand for many, many years in my walk through the scriptures. It comes from John 21 and it's, it's Christ's conversation with Peter in verses 15 and 17. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of Joseph, Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he saith, saith said unto him, I'm tired. <laughs> Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. It's an odd passage, isn't it? Why would he just keep asking him? And Peter's going, yes. Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah, I said that. I'm saying it again. Yes, I love you. And I've heard many different interpretations of this passage in, in, in different lessons and sermons and talks at church and things. But until I read the original Greek for this, I went, oh, wait a second. <laughs> Finally, I came to understand why he kept re repeating this request to Peter. Now, there are two Greek words, original Greek in the New Testament, for the word love. One is the word phileo, which means affection of a high order, high regard, high affection, love, feelings of love for somebody. The other word is agape or agapeo. And this is the pure love of Christ. This is sacrificial, like whole heart. Christ's love for us where he died for us. This is a different level. So phileo is here. Agape is here. It's, it's all of me type of love. So let me read you that same passage and listen to, I'm going to put the original Greek words back in and it will make so much more sense if you've never heard it like this. So when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of jo Jonas, agape thou me? more than these. And he said to him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I phileo thee. So he said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, agape thou me. Do you love me like that? And he said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I phileo thee. Jesus is trying to get him to see something here. And then listen to what he does the third time. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, phileo thou me. And Peter was grieved because he said the third time, phileo thou me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I phileo thee. Can you see what Christ was trying to push Peter to understand? He was saying to him, I know that you have high regard and affection for me. You've walked with me. For years, you've given up your livelihood. You've committed to being my disciple. You have shown that phileo. But now that it, this was in John 21, so it's very, very close to his time to leave them. And you can see he's saying, P Peter, we're talking about a deeper, deeper level here. I need agape. I need, I need your whole soul. Um, I need all that you have, have. And maybe, here's the thing I've wondered. Maybe Peter thought he loved Jesus on that level. Maybe what he thought he felt for Christ was, was as intense as it could get. And yet somehow the Lord was saying, you're not there yet. You're still at this phileo level. And so 
I need you to understand what agape is. Now, I have studied agape over the years, what it means. Maybe you have to, the pure love of Christ, this sacrificial, give your life for someone love. And I've come across a quote um, that for me has become kind of a life, like a life passage. Does that make sense? Do you ever have something that you read and you're like, that that's a key for me. I have shared it so many times I can't even count. It comes from the book, The Christian Secret of a Happy Life by Hannah Whittle Smith, who lived in the 1800s. This for me, this little section I'm going to read you, paints a picture of agape like almost nothing I've ever read. So we're going to use this little statement and, and unpack it a little bit in, in the next few minutes. Here's what Hannah says, and, and she speaks in her 1800s language. I love it. Continually at every heart, he is knocking and asking to be taken in as the supreme object of love. Wilt thou have me, he says to the believer, to be thy beloved? Wilt thou follow me into suffering and loneliness and endure hardness for my sake and ask no reward but my smile of approval and my word of praise? Wilt thou throw thyself with utter abandonment into my will? Wilt thou give up to me the absolute control of thyself and all that thou art? Will thou be content with pleasing me and me only? May I have my way with thee in all things. Wilt thou come into so close a union with me as to make a separation from the world necessary? Wilt thou accept me for thy only Lord and leave all others to cleave only unto me? I'll put this quote in the description box if you want to read through that or cut and paste it or something. Um, can you see agape just dripping off of those words? Can you hear the Lord asking and saying, you know, yes, I'm a miracle worker. Yes, I can endow you with blessings and supernatural power and grace. But th this is almost the level we come to in our walk with him where our love is tested. Where he's saying, will you, will you follow me even if it is into incredible difficulty? Will you stay around or will you leave? Like in John 6 where, where many start to bail and he looks at his disciples and go, are you going to walk away too? Agape is what keeps us connected to the vine even when the wind really starts to blow and he could stop it. And it's not. And he's saying, will you follow me? I'm going to read that part again. Will you follow me into suffering and loneliness and endure hardness for my sake? How many of his prophets and disciples in the scriptures have, have illustrated this for us? Um, I'm going to try really hard not to get emotional, but, but Abraham and Isaac, that story alone, the promised child was asked to be sacrificed. Will you sacrifice this thing that you love more than life? Will you put it him on the altar before me and let that go? And the hardest part about this story for me is that if you look in scripture, he was asked to offer Isaac as a burnt offering unto the Lord. And if you look up what a burnt offering is, I'm so sorry if this is a little graphic, but a burnt offering is where you took the animal in the law of Moses and you cut it up. You took the skin off. You cut the body into pieces and laid them in the, on the altar in a specific order. He didn't just say, take a knife and, and sacrifice Isaac on the altar. He said, well, mm, mm, will you take apart this thing that you love and burn it to pieces? Do you love me more than this? And, and Let's apply this to our life because we're, we're not asked to sacrifice our child. But what he's saying at the level of agape is, will you take everything that you love and burn it up on the altar and let me be the only thing that remains? This makes our, sh our soul shake a little bit, this level of love. Because the gift of entering into this kind of oneness with Jesus Christ is beyond words to describe. In fact, I had a quote that I loved that captured it. Um, this comes from, where is it? Oh, I lost it. I think I accidentally deleted it. Maybe the Lord didn't want me to use it. <laughs> no, 
Oh, there it is. There it is. This comes from John H. Co. The soul must learn to love God just for himself in such a manner that he, and not the need to be loved, is the center of all things. The Lord must learn to love God just for himself in such a manner that he, and not our need to be loved, is the center of all things. Will you sacrifice? Will you surrender your whole life to me? Like Hannah said in that quote. Will you give up all that you are, all the control of your life to me? It's easy to say in words, especially in our early walk with him, when we're learning about who he is and how amazing he is. And, and it's easy to throw words at that and say, of course, yes, 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 yes. That's why I'm a follower. That's why I'm a believer. But then there, there come moments in life where he will present us with scenarios where suddenly it's not so easy to answer that. And our love is tested on a level that we previously haven't experienced. But the beauty of, of um, what happens in a relationship when we are able to step into that space and offer him every single cell of our heart where nothing is held back, nothing is in the way anymore. That, that took me a while to peel away the layers that were in the way. They weren't just easily shed. Maybe, maybe they were for you. <laughs> um, some of the earlier layers were, were, but the deep things, the deep attachments, and I've talked a lot about that on my channel. Um, so maybe you're familiar with me talking about that, but the deep attachment, to, it took time to get to the point where I would burn it all on the altar, on the altar and say, you and you alone. Like, yes, I want this. I want to move to this level. Agape, agape thou me, JC? Or do you just flail me? Do you just have affection for me and high regard for me? And, and you come to church and you praise and you talk good, you know, good things about me. Or are you moving to a level in this relationship of love that we're building where it's me and me alone, where you will surrender everything that you are into my hands and into, to me? Um, this comes from Alicia Britt Scholey in her book, The Night is Normal, which I will put the link below. It, it goes into this a lot. But she, she said each, she says each choice to commit to the upward call of love, that's what we're talking about, the upward, deeper and deeper call of love, is simultaneously a choice not to self-protect, to not run and hide or cover and conceal. She said in the hard times when things get complicated and suddenly I have to ask myself how deep my love is. In those hard times, she says my treasure was fixing things through figuring things out. God's treasure was my follow. It was this question that just rings out when we get to this level. Will you follow me no matter what? Will you follow me? Um, let's do some scriptures. I had a whole list and then I thought, I don't, I don't want to get overwhelming. Let's, let's just do two that are, are all over. It's not just, this idea isn't just in one place. They're all throughout the, the New Testament. Two of them that capture this agape question. One is in Matthew 10, but it's also in Mark and it's in two places in Luke. You'll know it well. He who seeketh to save his life shall lose it. And he that loses, loseth his life for my sake shall find it. What's crazy about this verse though, is when again, I studied the Greek. Um, he who loses his life, you look up that word life in the Greek. And there is another Greek word, Zoe which means your general physical or spiritual life. It's your life. That's the word Zoe. He did not use that word, that Greek word, in any of the times he said this. I looked up every single time I could find it in the New Testament. Every time he used the word psyche for life. Your psyche. And you can already hear what that root word is. It's your heart, your soul. He who loses his heart, his inner man, his soul, <laughs> will find it in me. This is where we give him our entire heart, where it's, it is 100% his. And we have to fight the battles to get, like we've talked about in other videos, everything else, other lovers, other distractions, other things we're attached to out of the way. Um, Matthew 16 is the other one, but it's also in Luke 9. It's also in Mark 8. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. This is our surrender. This is our sacrifice. 
he offered one for us, for all time, that rescued us from the depths of hell. His sacrifice will forever mean so much to me. But I think sometimes we think, oh, but he's not going to ask that of me. <laughs> he just did. You take up your cross, which is to sacrifice anything to follow me, to be all in, right? Even if as some of his disciples that led to their death. I mean, I don't mean to be morbid, but but it's the death of my natural man. It's the death of my <laughs> my own control over my life. It's the death, you know, it's what Paul talks about in Galatians 2. I'm crucified with Christ. And now I live through him. Let me let me do a few more scriptures. <laughs> so just get into two, two. But I have a few more <laughs> just in case and I want to do them anyway. I think this is the stage also where we show our love um, by our willingness to obey him at all costs. Like she said in that quote earlier, where no more self-protection, no more concealing or covering or running or hiding from certain things of the gospel we don't like or whatever. We are just, we are all in, in obedience with wherever he leads. It, it's John 15. Again, the theme for all these videos, John 15, it's there, right there. If you keep my, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love even as I've kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Obedience is, is our way of pouring out our love for him. I will. I'm not going to run if it gets hard. John 14, the, the chapter before, if you love me, keep my commandments. He has my commandments and keeps them. Is he who loves me? Agape. Not just when I'm working miracles for you. Not just when I'm blessing you. And I will bless you through all the hard. If you keep walking and it does lead into loneliness, or hardness, or suffering. I'm going to be there with you. It's not like I'm just asking you to be miserable just to show that you love me. But but there's something to showing that you're willing to sacrifice. That shows a beauty to your love that nothing else can. I mean, even a, a simple example, when I when I chose to marry my husband, what I was saying is, I'm going to take your name. I'm going to leave behind my old life. I'm going to build a life fully with you. I'm committing to spend every day with you, to build a family with you, to sacrifice much, almost everything, to begin to be your wife and, and do this walk together. Isn't that what Christ is asking for? Will you be all in? Covenant your whole heart. Everything you are. I love this quote. I love this. Oh, how many quotes can I have, right? <laughs> this is from Ezra Taft Benson. Those captained by Christ will be consumed in Christ. They set fire in others because they are on fire. Their will is swallowed up in his will. They do always those things that please the Lord. Not only would they die for the Lord, but more important, they want to live for him. They have Christ on their minds as they look unto him in every thought. They have Christ in their hearts as their affections are placed on him forever. They feast on the words of Christ, talk of Christ, rejoice in Christ. They are made alive in Christ. In short, they lose themselves in the Lord and find eternal life. You lose yourself in him. That's what agape is. That's what Hannah was trying to capture with that. Will you lose yourself in me? And and honestly, I think that's the reason I wanted to do this video last is because I think it builds on what we talked about in the last section. Will you just lose yourself in me? Will you, no matter what, just give yourself to trust that even if you don't understand, and I mean, it builds on all of them, all of everything we talked about. But even if you don't understand, will you just trust me? Will you just, <laughs> just be all in? And what, what the key for me that allowed my soul to just break open, to begin to feel this kind of agape for him is what we talked about in four about him healing me of this deep baggage and trauma and difficulty that I had just carried all this mess, all that inner mess as he began to take that all apart. There was a, a loyalty, like a, just, I'm yours forever for what you have done. I mean, I'm not saying that my love is paying him back for what, but I just, I was so enamored by this redeemer that just could completely transform the way I thought, the way I lived, 
like it just began to pour out. Yes, I want to lose myself in you. And yes, as much as I may ball at times to lay some things on the altar, I know him now to where, yes, I want to do that as Abraham did. As Job, when all his friends were saying, curse God and die, look at, and Job was like, I'm locked in now. I'm locked in. I'm not sure why things are happening or why what, you know, my discipleship is looking like this, but I'm locked in. I'm all in. So that's how we're going to finish up this series. I could talk about this for a while. <laughs> we're just going to leave it at that. To ponder, to chew on for a little bit. I wasn't there in my earlier days and I don't think he expected me to because it's a progression. Any relationship of love is a progressively deepening walk where you become more and more and more one. But at the final layer, when we reach this agape layer, it's all offered at his feet. The entire control of ourselves, our whole life, surrendered to his will, no matter what he asks. <laughs> and he can empower us to do that through his grace. But I think as we begin to experience more and more intimacy with him, I think we'll, we'll just want to. We'll just say, like Peter did, where else am I going to go? Who else has the words of life like you do? Where else am I going to go? And just pour out. I hope this series has been helpful. I don't know what I'm doing next. My life is about to get really crazy, and I may explain it more in a future video, but I just want to offer my love that you have joined me on this channel and that you too make wonderful comments that build my faith and, and just show me your love for Jesus Christ. It, it's just, there's nothing in the world as fulfilling as our relationship with him. So to explore that, there's nothing more important we could do. Bless you. Have a good week. All my love. Take care.